Mervyn's was an American middle-scale department store chain that opened in 1949 and closed in 2009. Welcome back to my channel. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you get notified of my latest videos. Please hit that like button and leave a suggestion or a comment. You might see that in a future video. Thanks for watching and now back to a regular scheduled program. Open, open, open. Hi. <laughs> no! Ah, hi, you okay? The dream again. Which one? Loses key or key breaks key off? Key breaks off. Key breaks off. Yeah, okay. I know. Mervin's Super Sale now through Saturday. Doors open at 9. We promise. Mervin's big brand, small prices. Mervyn's was founded in 1949 in San Lorenzo, California by Mervyn Morris, who took the advice of an architect who told him that exchanging the I in his first name for a Y would add flair to the department store that he named after himself. The centerpiece of Mervyn's merchandise was a line of private label family apparel which Morris sold in season at prices higher than a discount retailers, but still below what his customers would pay for similar goods in other department stores. With the help of two full-time employees, Mervyn's sales reached $100,000 in its first year of business. Mervyn's was located in the midst of San Lorenzo Village, a planned residential community between the cities of Hayward and San Leandro, composed of two and three bedroom tract homes built between 1944 and the 1950s. Mervyn's carved a niche for itself by having a relatively no-frills shopping environment that reduced overhead, enabling the store to price merchandise lower than competing department stores. Mervyn's also offered significantly discounted factory seconds of base goods such as jeans, t-shirts, underwear, and similar garments, as well as household linens with minor flaws that were undetectable by most. This marketing strategy was later abandoned before Mervyn's expanded beyond its original single location, but Mervyn's remained popular as a lower priced alternative to national department store chains. Morris relied on rapid inventory turnover to secure profits, maintaining a loyal customer base by ensuring that Mervyn's products represented good value. Innovative advertising also helped keep Mervyn's in the public eye. For many years, it was the only retailer in California to publish its own tabloid advertisement. The second Mervyn store opened about 15 miles south as an anchor tenant of the Fremont Hub Shopping Center, one of the two regional malls in Fremont, California in 1962. This emphasis on providing customers with value rather than on offering a luxurious shopping experience was an unusual concept at the time when the full service department store was still the standard in general merchandise retailing. It proved profitable, however, and Morris gained a reputation as a pioneer in the industry. By the early 1970s, the company was in a position to expand considerably. In 1971, it went public, raising $5.4 million over the counter to retire all of its outstanding debt. Then between 1972 and 1978, Mervyn's nearly quadrupled in size, opening 31 stores, all of them in California and Nevada. In October of 1975, the chain expanded to Southern California, opening stores in Fullerton and Huntington Beach. By 1978, the company had grown to a chain of more than 50 stores in three states. Mervyn's success attracted the interest of Dayton Hudson, a Midwestern retailer known primarily for operating the upscale Dayton and Hudson's store chains. In 1978, the company acquired all 55 Mervyn stores in a stock swap valued at nearly $300 million. In 1962, Dayton's created two subsidiaries that would prove highly successful, the Target chain of discount retailers and the B. Dalton chain of bookstores. Backed by Dayton Hudson's financial resources, Mervyn's embarked on a remarkable course of expansion. By the mid-1980s, the chain was operating 148 stores. 
In 1984, Mervyn's opened nine stores in Texas, its first adventure outside the western United States, and posted a $223 million profit on sales of more than $2 billion. The average store had about 80 to 130 employees. All employees had credit goals, which referred to the number of customers that opened a Mervyn's credit card account. Part-time employees were expected one per every eight hours, and a leadership team was expected one per every 40 hours. Mervyn's was highly regarded in the retail industry in the mid-1980s, when many of its competitors for the mid-range department store customer were floundering. Many of Mervyn's rivals retooled themselves, adopting many of Mervyn's best ideas. Most notable, JCPenney's abandoned its own identity as a full-line department store and, like Mervyn's, focused on apparel and soft goods. Competitors began publishing their own tabloid advertisements, imitating the marketing tactic Mervyn's had used for decades. Perhaps most important, several retailers across the retailing spectrum began selling department store quality goods at discounted prices. Faced with increased competition, Mervyn's business began to taper off, particularly when factory outlet stores started becoming popular. Perhaps led by a false sense of security, Mervyn's made no aggressive moves to stay ahead of the competition. Mervyn's profits sank sharply in 1986 and remained depressed in 1987. Mervyn's began to recalibrate its merchandise lines, since low prices and good values no longer made Mervyn's unique in an era when Kmart became the largest retailer in the United States and intramural rival Target prospered. The company had to find ways to distinguish itself once more. The chain responded by focusing its attention even more closely on apparel. Mervyn's also responded to heavy price competition from its rivals by trying to upgrade the quality of its clothing, even when it meant raising prices slightly. Mervyn's sales and profits slightly rebounded. In the 1990s, however, the chain's recovery stalled, hurt by the sharp downturn in the California economy, sales flattened out during the first half of the decade, and profits dropped sharply. Mervyn's struggles continued into the mid-1990s. From 1995 to 2001, the stores were rebranded as Mervyn's California in an effort to identify with its West Coast roots. A media campaign was launched to publicize the rebranding with TV commercials and catalogs featuring former San Francisco 49ers quarterback Joe Montana. The rebranding had little effect on the company's revenues, and the California was dropped from the name in 2001, reverting to the original name. In March of 2004, Target Corporation announced that they planned to put the Mervins and Marshall Fields divisions up for sale to focus on Target stores. Target Corporation was approached by many buyers from both stores, but many of the potential buyers saw value only in the real estate. Target refused to sell to the groups that wanted to purchase Mervins for the property value only. Target would only consider deals that would not close the company and put the then 30,000 employees out of work. The Mervins locations in Minnesota were closed in 2004 as part of the deal between Target Corporation selling their Marshall Fields divisions to the May Department Store Company in June of 2004. In July of 2004, Target Corporation announced that Mervins had been sold to a group of investors that included private investment firm and turnaround specialist Sun Capital Partners, Cerberus Capital Management, and real estate investment company Lubert Adler Management Inc. 62 store closures were announced by the new owners in September of 2005, stating that 62 stores closed only accounted for 17% of the chain's sales. Mervins had an enviable real estate portfolio and it was believed that they could further invest in those properties and make themselves more competitive. In 2007, an additional 18 stores were closed. On July 29, 2008, Mervins announced that it filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. Soon, the Chapter 11 case was converted to a Chapter 7 liquidation on October 17, 2008. 
Although the company initially vowed to keep all locations open during the reorganization efforts, the company announced in August of 2008 the closure of all 26 underperforming stores. After these closures, Mervyn's was left with about 150 stores. Well, Rick Mervyn Morris is now 88 years old, and yes, tonight he is speaking out, saying his proudest accomplishment going bankrupt is simply a tragedy. Why? If you've ever wondered if there's someone behind the name Mervyn's, there is. This is the opening day of the first store. That's July 29th, 1949. Mervyn Morris says from day one, business was gangbusters. He sold the company in the late 70s for $300 million and now says corporate greed is the reason the chain is closing its doors. This was a human tragedy. This didn't have to happen. Four years ago, Dayton Hudson, owners of Mervyn's and Target, sold Mervyn's to a group of private equity firms. Morris claims the firms stripped the company of its real estate assets, sucked out millions of dollars in cash, and then rented the stores back to Mervyn's at double the rate. It is greed, and it doesn't do our economy any. It is, well, it actually, it, it hurts the economy terribly. What makes Morris even angrier is that one of the equity firms, also a parent of Chrysler, is now asking for a federal bailout. These very people going to Washington now and wanting to be bailed out of Chrysler, after they raped Mervyn's, in my opinion, is not right. Whatever the reasons, longtime customers are sad to see the stores closing. The store going out of business, it's an American icon. I love Mervyn's, and, you know, I'm, that'll be sad to see it go. And tonight at the Glendale store, the Mervyn sign you see there has been shut off the entire night. The store has been open for business. I can't tell you some more bad news for the employees. Their 401ks, they were told, will be temporarily suspended because their funds are not 100% available. The company saying the economic downturn is the reason. We're live in Glendale tonight. I'm Juan Fernandez, KCAL 9 News. Hey, if you just watched my video, thanks for watching. Hit that like button and please subscribe to Eric C. Productions.